Hey, what's up guys? This is Alex from Sipno Tech, and today we are taking a look at the XPS 12 from Dell. This is Dell's second attempt at a 2-in-1 hybrid device. So this is aimed at replacing your tablet and also your laptop to make it into a universal device. Dell actually attempted this uh, on their previous XPS 12. The, it was this weird metal frame that you had to flip the screen back and forth. Funky design. But with the two-in-one devices and the hybrids starting to saturate the market, Dell obviously had to throw one in there too. So uh, this whole new redesign from Dell is actually much sleeker. I really like the design of the new XPS 12. But will I like all the other stuff that goes on inside the XPS 12? On paper, it looks like a terrific beast of a hybrid device, laptop, whatever you want to call it. We're into Intel Core M. We'll get into the specs, but let's take a look at it and see how this compares to all the other ones and if it's a good device that is worth purchasing. On the left side of the device, we will see the volume rockers at the very top, followed by a full-size SD card slot with a flap on it for expandable storage, followed by the main selling point of this device for me, which is two, count them, two full USB-C type Thunderbolt 3D ports. So that's always great to have because USB-C, it's kind of future-proofing this device. And right under that, we have a headphone jack. The volume rockers are a bit indented into the panel and they're hard to find when you're looking for them. They're kind of mushy and soft, so there's no tactile feel when you press on them. There's no response. Um, sometimes you don't even know they're there. While it's great that Dell included a full-size SD card slot and a flap to protect it from dust, the flap is unbelievably hard to open. I have not been able to pry it with my fingernails, and uh, you know, if you put too much force on it, you might damage it. So. That flap is a killer to open. If we take a look at the front side when the whole unit is docked together, it really does look like a traditional laptop with an indenture for your finger to lift up the panel. And for those of you wondering, this does pass the one finger lifting test, mainly because it is a detached unit. On the right side of the tablet, we have a power button. So when this is detached into a tablet mode, you have a power button to wake and sleep the laptop. The XPS 12 contains a 1080p 12 and a half inch IPS panel with viewing angles up to 170 degrees. While this isn't as glamorous as say the XPS 13's infinity display, I actually think this looks really nice. It's a really good looking display. And Dell also offers a 4K option, uh, but the 4K option is slightly more expensive, and it is a little overkill for a 12.5-inch device. I don't think you can notice the difference. Uh, for my purchase, I have a 1080p one, and I think it looks really great for a screen of this size. The color reproduction is really nice, and when things work, this is a very nice media consumption device. It's protected by Corning Gorilla Glass. The back side of the tablet has a really nice Dell logo in the center. It's very simplistic. And it also features this really nice black matte over a metal finish. And I really like the matte finish. It, it's a good grip. But at the same time, it's a very, very fingerprint magneted device. My current configuration on this is a 6th generation Intel Core M5 processor with 8GB of memory and 128GB of SSD. It has an Intel HD Graphics 515 and it also features a backlit keyboard which we'll take a look at. Now I really like this keyboard that, the, that Dell has provided with the XPS 12 because the tactile feel on the keys, it's terrific. It's one of the nicer ones I've used. And there's a nice little round curve on the keys. And that just helps the shape of your fingertip on the key as you're typing. And I, I'm actually able to type pretty fast on this keyboard. And I really like the design. The trackpad is actually pretty nice. It's what Dell calls a board touchpad glass precision touchpad with gesture support. That's a long name for it, but it's a great trackpad for 
the most part. It's a little oversensitive at times, but overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the trackpad. What I really like about the XPS 12, I actually am a huge fan of the magnetic dock. I really like this magnet keyboard here. A lot of people don't like this little hinge mechanism with a little gap here. I actually kind of like it. When you close it, it magnetically holds it together, and you have a little bit of a, a grip right here, like a little notebook grip. I really like that. This is really neat. The hinge itself is very sturdy. This is a very sturdy hinge, and overall, it doesn't add too much weight to the tablet. This is altogether 2.85 pounds, two, two and about three pounds, slightly under three pounds. And while it's not the lightest book in the world, look, it's, it, you can use it with one hand. And the tablet itself is slightly under two pounds, which uh, is not the easiest thing to hold for long periods of time. One infamous thing about the XPS 12 that a lot of critics uh, hated was that you can only have one viewing angle and it's unadjustable. Uh, to me, it's not detrimental, but it is somewhat inconvenient at times when you're docked into your keyboard. Uh, the one angle it does provide is actually a pretty decent angle that I usually have all my laptops on. So uh, it doesn't bother me as much, but I can see how uh, the more bigger screen enthusiasts who have to have that perfect angle would be frustrated since they can't adjust the angle. For 1099 USD, Dell is offering the XPS 12 in a bundle that includes a stylus and a adapter, a USB-C type adapter. Uh, that's the package that I purchased. It's a 1080p screen with those two in the bundle. The USB type C adapter it's kind of bulky. It has multiple things in it, which is nice to have. It has HDMI, VGA, Ethernet, and USB 3 uh, converting to a USB Type-C that pulls out. Uh, it's a little thick, a little big. Dell sells it for $75 on the website. Uh, the Dell Active Pen interacts with your XPS 12 with an ergonomic active stylus that offers industry-leading precision, superior writing performance, and top click button. That's what Dell says. Uh, I like it. I like the pen a lot. Uh, the pressure sensing is terrific. Um, if you draw, if, you, if you're an artist, you can definitely use this pen and you can feel um, a difference compared to the cheaper ones you can purchase on Amazon. This one's made, I don't know if it's made specifically for Dell products, but it works really well with the XPS 12. This is actually one of the only things that I think Dell did really well in conjunction with one another. The uh, Dell Active Pen works really well with the Dell XPS 12 touchscreen. Guys, I have to say, nothing works on this. Nothing, absolutely nothing works on this PC. It's ridiculous how nothing works on this PC. After downloading Steam and playing Skyrim for a little bit, I was kind of impressed that the Core M actually worked better than I expected when it came to running games on Steam. Skyrim on low settings ran actually really smoothly at around 30 frames per second, which is way more playable than I thought it would be. But after playing it once, I never got Steam to open again. I, I still, to this day, cannot open Steam back up, which is absolutely ridiculous. And, and to make matters worse, I can't even use any web browsers. Google Chrome would crash. It would crash after a couple minutes or within 30 seconds, but it never lasted longer than a few minutes. And then I read online that you should use Chrome Canary so I downloaded Canary and I tried it and it didn't do anything else. It also crashed every couple minutes. So I was like, you know what, let's just use Microsoft's default browser, which is Edge. At first, Edge was working relatively well and then it stopped responding as well. The whole computer is useless if it can't do any basic tasks like web browsing, which even a basic Chromebook can do better than this computer. It's not fun not being able to do anything on this. Look, it froze up. This is on Microsoft Edge, and it's a tablet. It's in tablet form, too, so ideally people like to read on their tablets. It's not working right now, guys. 
I, I don't know what to say. Like, none of the web browsers work on this. It's ridiculous. Like, you can't even go online on your computer or tablet. So what's the, what, what's the purpose of this? I don't understand. So Windows, not necessarily better than Chrome OS, to be honest, for certain things. Another very, very, very frustrating thing for me on this device, there's a lot of them, but this is the most frustrating, one of the most frustrating at least, this computer keeps switching back to my tablet mode, and I've actually disabled all the tablet mode stuff, and I've switched it multiple times in the settings to make it less touch-friendly, right? So I can get the icons on the bottom, make it like a desktop Windows experience. And this device does not hold a battery charge at all. I would close it, and it goes to sleep, and then the next hour or so it would go down to zero or next couple hours it would go drop all the way down to zero while it's off you know i can even power off the device and it still doesn't hold a charge it's absolutely ridiculous if a modern day cell phone can last maybe two three days if it's just on standby right how can a laptop not be able to go to sleep the macbooks have no, they're, they're terrific. The Chromebooks are terrific at this. I've had many Windows laptops which could do the same thing. You can leave it there, closed, sleeping, for hours, and it will lose maybe a few percent. This thing drains the entire thing and has to reset all the options. And for some reason, it doesn't save the options. I've tried many times. When I have the XPS 12 off the plug, charged at 100%, and I'm using it from 100% down to almost 0%, I can usually get about 3 to 4 hours of use, which is nowhere near a full workday. That's usually not a great number to have, but when you factor in the non-ability of the XPS 12 to hold a charge in sleep mode, uh, it's just a horrible, atrocious battery life. Unfortunately, I cannot recommend the XPS 12. This is just something that was not ready for the market. It really wasn't. It felt like one of those CES devices that uh, uh, Dell announces their products at. And they say, this is just a pre-production unit. We have a lot of kinks to work out, but none of the stuff, none of the errors and all the crashes will be there when the final product is released. But this is the final product, and it is available for purchase to the mass consumers. So it just isn't ready for prime time. It really wasn't. And I was very disappointed in the fact that I really liked the hardware, but the software was not there. And I've had a lot of experience with Windows 10 on multiple platforms, uh, desktops, laptops, ultrabooks. And I know for a fact that Windows 10 is a pretty pretty nice OS. It actually is a very good platform to use. And it and when it's running right, it runs really well. Unfortunately, the XPS 12 doesn't run well with Windows 10 and I, I think there's some software optimization problems there. I will leave the possibility open that I have a lemon, that they sent me a lemon. But Reading uh, on Amazon some of the reviews and some other people who uh, have it on forums, they also have a lot of the issues that I do. So I don't think it's a coincidence. Um, nonetheless, this is Alex from Sipnotech, and thank you guys so much for uh, watching this video. Hopefully, it was helpful in uh, if you were deciding to purchase this or not. Uh, be sure to tune back in, subscribe, like our videos, check us out at Instagram and Twitter. And uh, keep coming back. Our videos are only going to get better, and uh, we're going to keep improving the channel. Uh, so thank you very much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.